Good morning, my name is Maureen Chung. Welcome to Daily Devotional of August the 14th. The Bible passage is 1 Samuel uh, 5 verse 1 to 7 verse 1, but I'm just going to use selected verses. The title is, God Did It His Way. Now today we continue with the story of the captured Ark of the Covenant of God and how it was being moved from city to city by the Philistines until it was eventually returned to Israel. Sometimes we human beings are funny in the way we think we must protect God. When we can't do a single thing to keep God's honor before the world, He did it His way without our help. In these two chapters, 1 Samuel chapter 5 and 6, the terms, the Lord's hand, or God's hand, or His hand, appear seven times. What we think is coincidental uh, can really be God at work in his mysterious ways. The passage is long, but I shall narrate it in an abbreviated way. If you have your Bibles, please follow my narration with a Bible in hand. After the Philistines had captured the Ark of the Covenant of God, they took it to the first city, Ashdod. They put the ark in the temple of their god Dagon. It was to believe in ancient time that the winning army's god must be stronger than the losing army's god. And therefore, the Lord God had to pay homage to Dagon at his temple. Uh, by the next day, the people of Ashdod found Dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. They put Dagon back in his place. The next morning, worse. Not only that Dagon had fallen again before the Ark of the Lord, but also that his head and hands were broken off on the threshold. Chapter 5, verse 6 and 7 read, The Lord's hand was heavy on the people of Ashdod and its vicinity. He brought devastation on them and afflicted them with tumors. Then when the people of Ashdod saw what was happening, they said, the ark of the, of the God of Israel must not stay here with us because his hand is heavy on us and on Dagon our God. Obviously, what happened to Dagon and the tumors on the people of Ashdod and vicinity were things that only the Lord God could do. The Lord's hand was recognized by the Philistines. They decided to move the ark to the next city, Gath. Chapter 5, verse 9 says, But after they had moved it, the Lord's hand was against this, that city, throwing it into a great panic. He afflicted the people of the city, both young and old, with an outbreak of tumors. The same thing happened. The Lord's hand was against the city of Gath, and they had an outbreak of tumors too. God vindicates himself without human help. So they decided to send the Ark of God to a third city, Akron. But the people of Akron wouldn't have it. So in a gathering of Philistine city kings, they decided to send the Ark back to where it belonged. Chapter 5 verse 11b to 12 records, For death had filled the city with panic. God's hand was very heavy on it. Those who did not die were afflicted with tumors, and outcry of the city went up to heaven. Such was the ark, being passed around for seven months among the Philistine cities. How did the Philistines send the ark back to Israel? To begin with, they decided to send the ark with a guilt offering to God, thereby admitting wrongdoing. Chapter 6, verse 3 explains. They answered, If you return the ark of the God of Israel, do not send it back to him without a gift. By all means, send a guilt offering to him. Then you will be healed, and you will know why his hand has not been lifted from you. Now, to compensate for their guilt, the Philistines decided on giving five gold tumors and five gold rats, according to the five city rulers of Ashdod, Gaza, Ashkelon, Gath, and Akron. Hopefully, by compensating, they could buy themselves out of trouble with the God of Israel. 
God lifting his hand from the Philistines means his sparing them from the tumors and the plague of rats. Look at chapter 6, verse 5. Make models of the tumors and of the rats that are destroying the country and give glory to Israel's God. Perhaps he will lift his hand from you and your gods and your land. How did the Philistines send the ark back to Israel? Part one was the gifts. Part two was the cart with the ark on it. They used two cows that had given birth to calves and had never been yoked to pull a cart. By nature, the cows couldn't be taken away from their baby calves. By nature, they wouldn't know how to pull a cart together without being trained. With two things against nature, if the cows went to Israel on their own, then it was the Lord God who was returning the ark to Israel, and it was God who brought the disasters on the Philistines. Otherwise, it was just by chance that they had the tumors. These are the words of chapter 6, verse 9b. If it goes up to its own territory, to what Beth Shemesh, then the Lord has brought this great disaster on us. But if it does not, then we will know that it was not his hand that struck us, but that it happened to us by chance. You guessed the result. The cows went straight up to Israel's town, Beth Shemesh, with the ark and the goat tumors and the goat rats. The Israelites were elated to see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. They chopped up the wood of the cart and offered the cows as a sacrifice. God vindicated himself without human help. Finally, the men of kiriath Jerem, took the Ark to Abinadab's house and consecrated Eliezer, his son, to guard the Ark of the Lord. About year 2001, a new subdivision was being developed in Markham to the north of Toronto. A sister in the Lord alerted some of us in our church to the possibility of moving there. So a few families went to see the builder's site plans. The result was that a few families did relocate to Markham from Toronto in the year 2002. When houses were built and families moved in, we started visiting the neighborhood door to door, inviting people to come to home Bible studies. Two evangelistic Bible studies were formed and a few people were led to Christ Jesus. Little did we know that in 2003, we sold our church facility in Toronto and in 2004, we purchased a new facility in Markham. By then, a nucleus of a few families was already the core group ready for our ministry site in Markham. What happened? God's hand was in the sequence of events. Nothing was coincidental. God did it His way. Even with COVID-19 and the seventh wave with Omicron BA5 now, when we need to be careful about overcrowded gatherings, God is still working out His plan His way. Even with runaway inflation in North America and rising interest rate, God is still working out his plan his way. We don't need to protect God. Rather, God can vindicate himself, praise his holy name. Yes, God is glorious and he's always right. Bless you, my friends, and see you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.